Hey everybody, Morgan here. We're going to be continuing on with the electrochemistry lectures for AP Chem. In the lecture outline, we are on page number two, and this is where we're going to be talking about electrochemical cells. So any device in which a redox reaction occurs is an electrochemical cell. And sometimes we can turn these into very useful devices. And we're going to categorize them two ways, as electrolytic cells and as galvanic cells. The older name for galvanic is the voltaic cell. What's the difference? Well, basically, galvanic cells are spontaneous reactions, and electrolytic are non-spontaneous. So if we can get useful electric work out of it, it's spontaneous, it's a galvanic cell. Now, to introduce these historically, we have always used something called the Danielle cell, named after some French guy. And it is composed of two beakers and it is possible to get very fancy custom-made ones for this but typically just two beakers that are side by side and there's going to be solution in each of the beakers now the first beaker historically contains zinc so we're going to put a piece of zinc there. That's the solid, that's the metal, just big old piece of zinc. And then in here in solution, we're going to have something that contains zinc, like zinc sulfate. So we're going to have Zn2+, plus. we're going to have SO4, 2-. minus. Now over here on the other side, the Danielle cell, We'll have a piece of copper, solid copper, metal, pure, not like a penny. Pennies are only partially copper. This is pure copper. And this solution would be copper sulfate. So we'll have Cu2 plus, we'll have SO4 2 minus. Now, the anion that we use, we just want something that's soluble. Nitrates work wonderfully, sulfates work wonderfully. Okay, they're soluble with lots of things. Chloride's soluble with a lot of things. All right, these two pieces of metal are gonna be connected by a wire going through a voltmeter, okay? Now, that's an electronic device that's going to measure whether or not uh, electric potential is flowing. Now, the final piece to this picture is something to complete the circuit, which we'd normally call a salt bridge, okay? Now, the salt bridge itself will need to contain a soluble salt, okay, something like KNO3, and it cannot be just pure salt. That would fall out of it. So we typically suspend it in a gelatin, we call it auger. And in your biology classes, you might have actually mixed up nutrient auger and used it for growing stuff in petri dishes, okay? So we've got like a gelatin that's in there. Then to keep it inside of the tube, we just put some little cheese cloth uh, around the ends of the tube with a rubber band or a string tying them off. Now, you can go very cheap on this. You can literally just soak some filter paper in a solution of potassium nitrate and lay it over there. The problem with that, of course, is it will dry out over time, okay? Or you can buy very expensive fancy beakers. There's pictures of these in the reading, okay, that have a semi-permeable membrane in a tube that connects the two beakers, okay? So now, let's talk about what's going on here, okay? We are going to have to identify two different sides, a side called the anode, and a side called the 
cathode. Okay, the anode is where oxidation occurs. And the cathode is where reduction is going to occur. Okay, now, it's stupid memory trick, anode, oxidation, A, O, those are both vowels. C and R are both consonants, okay? So what happens? On the left side in this specific combination, the zinc turns into zinc two plus plus two electrons. That means more pieces of zinc ion, individual zinc ions are gonna fall down here into solution. That is gonna make this overly positive, so it's gonna attract nitrate ion out of the salt bridge. The electrons are gonna flow through the meter over here, and they're gonna collect on the surface of the copper. The meter is gonna read 1.10 volts for what we're doing here, okay? Now, when you have those excess electrons over here, the Cu2 plus, plus two electrons will give you Cu, okay? Which means that over time, this plate will get smaller and this plate will get bigger. You will have an excess of sulfates over here because the coppers are going up, charge is not balanced, and K plus will be attracted down into there, okay? So this is a complete loop now. Electrons flow that way, charge flows back this way to give balance, electrons flow that way, okay? So the change over here on the left side is the oxidation, the way we've drawn it, and over here it's the reduction. Oxidation occurs at the anode, and reduction occurs at the cathode. I spell that kind of funny, I make my T look like a positive sign because the cathode is positive and the anode is negative. Negative electrode pushes electrons away, positive electrode attracts electrons in. And then the ion flow from the salt bridge will be that the anions go towards the anode and the cations towards the cathode. Okay? So, the salt bridge itself, what's its purpose? To balance charge. Or maybe you want to say it uh, to complete the circuit if you're a physics fan. All right? Okay, now. This little value, 1.10 volts, that's an important thing for us to be talking about, uh, and it's going to uh, influence uh, a lot about what we're going to be doing. <laughs> so we have to be able to figure out where that number comes from, and it's done with a device called the standard reduction, or sorry, the standard hydrogen electrode, which we use to measure standard reduction potentials. And jokingly, I call this she. So what does this look like? We're going to have a beaker. And it's very important that it be at 25 degrees Celsius, because these are standards, of course. And in it, we're going to have 1.00 molar HCl. 1.00 molar, again, because these are standards. So we're gonna have one molar H plus floating around down in here, okay? Now, into this, we are going to put a very fancy inverted test tube that has a side arm here so that gas can flow in and out. And then a platinum wire down to a piece of platinum metal, okay? PT, platinum, okay? That is gonna be a catalytic surface 
for some reactions to happen at. Okay? Then, off of this sidearm, we're going to need a source of H2 gas at 1.00 atmospheres, and it's got a pressure sensitive little doorway there, a flap that can go back and forth, so to speak. Now, you have two possible chemical reactions that can happen here. Two H plus plus two electrons can give me H2 gas, or H2 gas can give me two H plus plus two electrons. Now, either way, by definition, we are going to define the electromotive force or the standard reduction potential for that reaction to be 0, 0.00 volts in either direction. So this is the reduction direction. This is the oxidation direction. It's going to be 0, 0.00 volts either way. And every other reduction potential that we measure will be measured relative to those values. Okay? So that's the end of page two of the outline. Uh, I'm going to take each of the pages individually as we go through in these lectures and tune back in for page number three next. This is Morgan, signing off.